Good evening. If you arrive, let me know. Hi, Susan and Colin. Welcome. Good to see you or see you. <laughs> Very well, thank you. And you, I trust. Lucky weather we're having. Evening Trevor, evening Anne, welcome, we'll give it five or ten minutes to see, well we're early anyway, but just to see how many people are joining us. to have lovely sunny weather isn't it really nice excuse me nibbling i'm just having a little snack before we get going Five people joining us at the moment. I know my um, my daughter will be joining because she reminded me that it was quiz week and I hadn't got around to doing it. So it wasn't a last minute quiz, but it was uh, finished off this afternoon. But we'll have, hopefully we'll enjoy it and learn something new. Every day is a school day, as they say. Evening, Clive. I'm afraid there's no... Um, Degree level chemistry this evening. <laughs> In fact, there's not even primary school level chemistry. <laughs> Rachel and John and Phoebe and Rufus, of course. Lovely. Phoebe's my new granddaughter and Rufus is, I suppose, a sort of a grand doggy son. <laughs> I think I don't publicised it as widely as usual, but we only have, um... yeah, the wine's lovely, Clive. Thank you very much. Nice glass of Shiraz to set the evening off. Went nice with me curry earlier, so I'm just having another one to keep me um, in good spirits. <laughs> How are we doing for time? Let's have a look. Where's the clock? Just gone seven, so we'll give it three or four minutes and then we'll crack on. Hello, Pat. Nine people taking part so far. Hopefully a few more before we get going. 
It's the usual format. You know, the uh, it's out of 50 with a couple of, you know, so eight, 48 questions with a couple of bonuses. Just while you're waiting, there's your topics for the evening. It's interesting setting these quizzes and knowing that different people have different interests and different strengths. So I'll try to vary it a bit each time. I know Clive loves the sport. And, uh... <laughs> Quiz shows, I thought, is a, it's not new, but I've done it before, but specifically questions about TV quiz shows. So we'll see how we get on with those. No TV, just movies this evening in that round. No art, just literature in that round. Hello, someone's left. We haven't even started and someone's had enough. <laughs> I'm just keeping one eye on the football score because uh, well, West Ham are losing at the moment, but hopefully they'll pull it back. That's not a question tonight. Couple of minutes, perhaps we'll see how we go. Oh, Pat's got more teasers. Shame he can't share them virtually. <laughs> no, I'm trying to trying to keep my weight down, so I'm doing okay so far. I've had a um, I've lost 18 pounds since January, so I'm very pleased with that. Keep keep it going. Might make my knees feel a bit better, but I'm not moaning, I'm just, you know, well, I am really. <laughs> Must be getting that age now, arthritis kicking in, you know. Oh, here's Janet and Murray, good. Yep, yeah, no, it's the last Saturday of the month, Janet which is, see, next Saturday is the 1st of May. So, uh, yep, yeah, this is the week. One of those weeks, I think I might be busy, so I might do a pre-recorded, you know, I think June, we're busy in the evening, so um, I'm going to do a, probably do a pre-recorded quiz that week for you. May, we should be okay, but we're going out for the day, so hopefully we'll be back, but I might do it in advance. Oh, you've got to have those treats, Susan. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It's funny how um, food that's good for you tastes... There's no taste to it, is there? But all the stuff that's bad for you tastes lovely. But oh, there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've just... All I've done, I haven't done anything drastic. Just cut down on portion sizes and it's it's been working quite well. I haven't lost enough for it to show yet, but it's uh, it's getting there. Well, 
Right, I think we shall um, make a start. It's just gone five past seven. So we'll see, we are, I think we'll get on with it um, as that's planned this evening. So usual sort of format, six rounds of eight questions, couple of questions here and there, we'll have some bonus points to make it up to 50. Out, so it's out of 50 as per usual. And well, let's go, hope you enjoy. Number one, geography. We had a question on the five Great Lakes of North America last quiz, but a slightly different one. Which of the five lakes is the largest? Now, I'm not telling you the names of the lakes, but which one of them is the largest of the five Great Lakes of North America? Which is the largest? So which of the five Great Lakes of North America is the largest? By surface area, I'm talking about here. So if, from a bird's eye view, which one's the biggest? But you'll have to see if you can work out the names of them, because I'm not going to give you the names. So the first question is on lakes, as you say, Anne. And it is, which is the great, of the Great Lakes in North America is the largest by surface area? Number one. So number two is, where is the Beaufort Sea? So where in the world, where on the globe is the Beaufort Sea? Evening, Kate. You've only missed one question if you have missed any at all. But you can rewind and catch up as we go. So, the Beaufort Sea, where is it located? Have you heard of it? Where is it on the globe? The Beaufort Sea. C. Number three on geography. Which of these microstates or principalities, whatever they may be called, which has the largest population out of Andorra, San Marino, or Liechtenstein? Which has the largest population of those three principalities, states, microstates, small countries, however you describe it? Andorra, San Marino, or Liechtenstein, which has the greatest population? You have the answer in front of you, it's just picking the right one. Which one do you think has the largest population of those three? Number four on geography. Which of the following countries is not is not on the equator? Out of Brazil, Kenya. The Maldives or the Philippines? Three of those are on the equator. One is not on the equator. So there you go. Which of the four countries listed there is not on the equator? Out of Brazil, Kenya, Maldives, or the Philippines? Three are on the equator, one is not. Which is it? 
Good evening, Chris and Sharon. Got an email from you rather than a, a comment, but welcome. So that was number four. Number five. Scottish mountains over 3,000 feet high are called what? Scottish mountains, if they are over 3,000 feet in height, are called something specific. What is it? 3,000 feet plus in Scotland, the mountain is called what? Number five, number six, this is a bit of a local one, so hopefully most of you are local enough, but there are nine villages in the local Rodings, the Essex villages called the Rodings. Can you name six of the nine Rodings? Something Roding, something Roding. There are nine. Can you name six of them for a point? So I'll give you a bit of time on that, obviously leave that... Um, Leave that up for a bit, give you time to think through. Nine Rodings. Can you name six of the Rodings, the Essex villages nearby between Harlow and Chelmsford? Actually, probably even not. Not quite even narrower than that, probably, but fairly, fairly close to us where we are, for those of us who are local anyway. Make a list of the roadings, as many as you can. Six of them for the point. Oh, have I got my questions wrong again, Clive? So I have. Do apologise. Yes, thank you, Clive. I think you think you checked these things through. Clive's, Clive spotted it last time as well. So the Rodings question is actually number question six. My apologies for the error. Quote, the Rodings question is question six. Name six. There you go. Six for six. There are nine villages in the Rodings. Can you name Six of them. Question six on geography. After making the mistake last time, I thought I checked it, but clearly not thoroughly enough. But yes, this is question six. I won't edit it now, but um, I'll keep you in track. Let's see what the next one, if I've got the number right for the next one. Hopefully it'll be number seven. If not, we might have nine questions in geography instead of eight. Oh, that's fine. It's all, you know, it's relaxed. Let's, en let's enjoy it. Chill. Okay, you've got a bit of time to think that through with a couple more questions, but question number seven. Yes, it is correct. Question number seven, as I've done before, what's the country in red? Can you name the country in red mm. from that map? So we're talking about North Africa, just to get you exactly where you need to be. What country is that highlighted in red? Hello Chris, Sharon, welcome. 
if you've missed well if you've missed any questions you can obviously rewind and move along as you at your own pace i'm certainly not asking them again <laughs> okay so that was number seven on geography and number eight the final question on geography is a flag which country is that the flag of this is the flag of which country for number eight Number eight, that's the flag of which country? Fairly plain sort of flag, if you like, you can remember that. So I think we'll move on. But we're into uh, round two, so I will do the literature questions. And here they come. After this round, we'll have the answers for the first two rounds, as per usual. So round two literature. Who is Hercule Poirot? Hercule Poirot's detective assistant. So in the Agatha Christie creation, Hercule Poirot has an assistant. What's his name? So the Belgian detective has an English assistant. What's his name? Number one on literature. Number two. How many books are there in the Bible? How many books in the Bible? That includes Old and New Testament. What is the total number of books in the Bible? Hopefully most of our audience this evening will know that. But I might have to give a tolerance later on just to, just to make it be a bit generous with it. We'll see how we go. But how many books are there in the Bible, both Old and New Testament together? Number three on literature. Alonso and Prospero are characters in which, no, it doesn't, in which Shakespeare play it should say in there. Alonso and Prospero are characters in which Shakespeare play. I'm not a great reader of Shakespeare, I have to be honest. So I did look these up. I've heard of them, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have got this myself. But that's the luxury of being the quiz master. You can research it before you ask the question. But which player Alonso and Prospero from? Number. Four we're on to for literature. John Huffam are the middle names, the middle names of which famous author? So there's one name at the beginning of that, one name at the end of that. John Huffam is in the middle. Now I have to say, I didn't know this, but he's a very famous author. But John Huffam are the middle names, the middle names of which famous author? Mm -hmm. 
So that's literature question four. Question five. Who is the author of the recent children's book that was released? I think actually it was November last year. Codename Bananas. Who is the author of that children's book? Codename Bananas. Author. November 2020 it was released. But who is the author? Codename Bananas. Number five, I mean numbers are right still. Number six on literature. Who were the co-founders of the Guinness Book of Records? It's been running since 1955. So who were the co-founders in 1955 of the Guinness Book of Records? I think it was called the Guinness Book of World Records or something slightly different, but basically the same thing. Comes out every year. 1955 was the first year of its publication. Who were the co-founders? number six and if you know my quizzes are more likely than lot not to have a Harry Potter question so here it is what was the occupation of Hermione Granger's father Hermione's parents were not wizards they were muggles if that means anything to you you'll know but what was her father's occupation Hermione Granger's father, what was his muggle occupation? What did he do for a living? It's all very quiet on the chat, must be uh, taxing your brains. <laughs> that was number seven and number eight on literature. The Booker Prize is awarded for what each year? The Booker Prize is an annual award in literacy, literature, literature. For what is it awarded? The best what, if you like. Obviously it's a book, but a book of what genre, what type, what type of book is the Booker Prize awarded for? I don't know who the panel are, but obviously it's a subjective thing that they decide upon each year. But what is it awarded for?
Okay, so that's literature and geography. So we're going to go through the answers for those just to see how you're getting on in the early, early rounds. Here we go for number one, the answers to number one. The largest of the Great Lakes is Lake Superior. I suppose the name sort of implies it's the biggest. But that is the largest by surface area. Lake Superior is the largest of the Great Lakes. Number two. The Beaufort Sea is, is north of Canada and Alaska, so up north of off North America, sort of alongside the, the uh, Arctic Ocean. But north of Canada, if you've got somewhere like that, you decide if you're there or thereabouts. So north of Canada and Alaska on the um, American continent. Number three, Andorra has the largest population of those three small states they're the approximate populations so quite a lot more for Andorra than San Marino or Liechtenstein so your answer you're looking for there is Andorra you don't have to guess the um, population as long as you've put Andorra that's your point number four of those four countries Philippines is the one that's not on the equator it's just north of the equator but the equator goes through Brazil, Kenya and Maldives. Philippines is just a bit far further north, but very close. So Philippines for your point. Number five. Scottish mountains that are over 3,000 feet are known as Munros. Munro, that's what they've decided to call them. Munro, if it's over 3,000 feet high. Number six, although I numbered it as five, is wrong. So take, I'll leave that up for a little while just so you can study it. I asked you to name six of the roading villages in Essex. They are the nine. So long as you've got six of those, they're alphabetically listed. Then, or well, they're not quite actually, because the last one's out of order. So long as you've got six of those or more, you get the point. Okay, if you've got four, I don't know if anyone's asking this, but if, if you've got four, I'll give you a half. So four for a half, six or more for, for one point out of that list of nine. I remember having this question at the hair a couple of years ago. I think we got there in the end, but I certainly didn't, wouldn't have got nine. But there they all are now. You drive through a lot of them on the A1060, or is it the B1060, I don't know. The Rodings Road to Chelmsford. But there you go. As long as you've got six of those, or four for a half, you've got your point. The country on the map, that was Tunisia. Hopefully fairly straightforward, but that's Tunisia on that map, on North Africa. And the flag for the final round is the flag of Finland. Blue cross on white. Background is Finland's flag. And that is geography. So literature. Here we go for the answers. Hercule Poirot's detective assistant was Captain Hastings. I think actually in the first um, stories he was a lieutenant, but he obviously got promoted an army officer. Hastings, as long as you've got Hastings, I think his first name's John, but Hastings or Captain Hastings or Lieutenant Hastings, you get the point. Number two, there are 66 Bible books in the Bible, Old and New Testament. 66 books in total. I won't um, split them up for new and old because that might be a question next time, maybe. Maybe it's some research for you. Number three. Alonso and Prospero are characters in The Tempest. Arthur Hastings, is it, Pat? Okay, thank you. I assume that's what you're referring to. But The Tempest is number three. Number four. John Huffham are the middle names of Charles Dickens. Now, I have to say, I researched that, didn't know that. Looking for some literary questions today. And 
found that out. And there I thought I knew a bit about Charles Dickens and that was something I didn't know or hadn't come across before. But John Huffham are the middle names of Charles Dickens. Okay, and number five, the author of the recent children's book Codename Bananas is David Williams. He's become quite um, prolific in recent times with children's books of a comical nature, I'm sure, by the looking at the name. David Williams for your codename Bananas. Number six, Ross and Norris McWhorter, twins who founded the Guinness Book of Records back in the 50s. Um, I think they're both dead now, and it is a long while ago, obviously. It must be a long while ago, it's even before I was born, even before Clive was born. I mean, that's saying something. But um, Ross and Norris McWhorter, for your point. Number seven. Hermione Granger's father was a dentist in Muggle Land. <laughs> so there you go, the dentist. If you got that, there's your point. Number eight on literature. The Booker Prize is awarded for the best novel. Not in any particular genre, but just what's considered, what's voted as the best novel. So a fictional story based on uh, whatever genre, but a novel that's considered the best by the panel is the Booker Prize winner. I think it was joint last year. Not something I'll keep a close eye on, I have to say. Okay, so that's rounds two, one and two. We're moving on to round three, which is movies. Now, I've put this first so you've got time to think about it. Bestseller, Susan, I would say, yeah, I'll give you half for that. It's not specifically the um, the one, but I will give you half because it obviously is a, well, I don't know if it is a bestseller saying that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bestseller, even if someone thinks it's a best novel. Take a half. Let's not worry about it. Okay, number one in movies. Only three movies throughout the history of the Oscars have won what's known as the Big Five Oscars, the Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Screenplay, Best Director. Can you name one of those three movies? Can you name one of those three movies that have won the Big Five Oscars? Just three have done it in the history of whatever it is of Oscars, 70 odd years, 75, 76 years, I think they've been going. Three films have won the Big Five in the same year. Can you name just one of them for the point? If you get two or three, well done. You're not getting any extra for it, but well done. So that's the uh, question one, the best movie that's won the Big Five, There'll be only three of them. So that's number one, gives you time to think it through. Number two, I'm gonna play a sound clip Hopefully it will play and you will tell me or you need to write down what is the movie from this sound clip. The first night's the toughest, no doubt about it. They march you in naked as the day you were born. Skin burning and half blind from that delousing shit they throw on you. And when they push you in that cell, when those bars slam home, that's when you know it's for real. Old life blown away in the blink of an eye. Nothing left but all the time in the world to think about it. Hopefully that was okay. I will play it again, but um, it should, well, say least, so for me to say it should be okay. The first night's the toughest. No doubt about it. They march you in naked as the day you were born. Skin burning and half blind from that delousing shit they throw on you. And when they push you in that cell, when those bars slam home, that's when you know it's for real. Old life blown away in the blink of an eye. Nothing left but all the time in the world to think about it. Okay, so that's number th number two. I'm hoping that you heard that. Um, but if not, well, I don't know. I heard it. Okay, number three. I think the next three are just 
movie stills or posters of films, can you name the movie? Can you name the movie from that image? For number three, can you name the movie from that image? Thank you, Susan. So that's number three. Number four is a still picture again, or a poster picture again. What's this movie? Going back a bit further, what's that movie? A still from. I think the actors are very recognizable, but can you recognize them together and the characters from which film they appeared in together? Number four, number five, another picture, movie, of a movie. Can you name that movie? I think the shadows might give more of a clue than the actual people in the image. That's number five. Number six, I think, is another movie sound. So again, a short piece of sound from a movie. Can you name the movie from this one? No lies. All right then. I confess. It is my intention to commandeer one of these ships, pick up a crew and tour to raid, pillage, plunder, and otherwise fill from our Weasley Black Guts out. Okay, let's play that again. Now this is from a series of films. I do want the specific film from for the point. And no lies. All right then. I confess. It is my intention to commandeer one of these ships, pick up a crew and tour to raid, pillage, plunder and otherwise fill for my Weasley Black Guts out. Okay. So that was number six. Number seven. Which film won the best Oscar, best picture Oscar last year? So the film was actually released in 2019, but the Oscars were a year ago because they're actually going to be done virtually in the next week or so for this year for, or for 2020. But which was the movie that won Best Picture Oscar for 2019, awarded in 2020? And number eight, while you're thinking of that, which famous actor played Private Godfrey in the 2016 film version of Dad's Army? They made a film of Dad's Army, that classic sitcom back in the day, but in the film version, who played Private Godfrey? Very famous actor. I think there are a lot of very famous actors in it, actually, but I'm just asking for this particular character. Who played Private Godfrey in the 2016 film version of Dad's Army? OK, so there are your movie questions. Moving on to the next round, which is sport. Some people will be groaning at the moment. Some people will be cheering. because It seems to have that effect in quizzes. Sport polarises opinions. But here we go anyway. Name the stadium. Name the sports arena. What stadium or arena are we looking at there? So 
So what is that stadium, sports arena, whatever you want to call it? But where is it? What is it? The iconic tower in the middle of the picture. A recent addition, I think. So what stadium is that? Number two. This is a mishmash of two famous footballers. The top half is one footballer. The bottom half is another. Half a point each. If you can name one or other or both of them. So half a point for each player. Top half is, so you know, put your hand over it, top and bottom, see if you can get a feel for who that might be. But who are the two footballers portrayed in that mishmash of a face? That was number two. Number three on sport. Who was the first female winner of the BBC Sports Personality of the Year? So just a name for one point, but for a bonus point, so you can get two points on this round, on this question. What year was this first female winner of the BBC Sports Personality of the Year? Now, I can't remember when when they started that competition, it was probably back in the 50s, I think. Mid to late 50s. But who was the first female winner? And for a bonus, what year? Now, as it's a bonus point, I'm not going to give you a tolerance on the year. Actually, I'm going to give you two years either way on the year. To have a stab at a year, even if you don't know the person, but you can pick a year, you could still get a point for that. I'm not saying... You've got to get the person to get the bonus. You can get one or two points on this either way around. So if you don't know a name or you get the name wrong, you can still get the bonus for the year. Have a stab at the year, if nothing else. And I'll give you two years either way when we come to the answers. That's number three. Sports person out of the year. Number four. Now, you know, might need to think about this. How many of the 20 Premier League football teams, the managers, are English? And I mean as of today. So this, this changed recently. The answer to this question changed recently. I did ask this a few weeks ago, and it's changed since then. So, in another quiz, I mean, I asked this a little while ago. There are 20 teams in the Premier League. How many of the managers are English? I just want a number. When I give the answers, I'll give you the names and the teams, just for interest. But all I want for the point is just a number. No tolerance. Get it spot on for the point. So those of you who know your football, take a few minutes to go through the teams. And those of you who don't, pick a number between 0 and 20. Twenty league, twenty Premier League teams. How many of their managers are English? English note that doesn't count Welsh and Scottish and Irish. English. I'll leave that with you because you've got a few questions to think that through. But number five is coming up. What's the maximum number of cars? Allowed on the starting grid of a Formula One Grand Prix. Now, a little bit of background to this. There hasn't been the maximum number on the Grand Prix starting grid since 1995. 
but the maximum is still the maximum. So it's been lower than that for 25 years or so, well, 25 years. But what is the maximum that they allow on the starting grid of a Formula One Grand Prix? Not what it is now, what is the maximum? So you might know what it is now, and you might want to think, well, actually, from what I've just said, it's more than that, because it is. But how many more? What's the maximum number of cars on the starting grid of a Formula One Grand Prix, which hasn't happened and since, since 1995? Number five and uh, number six looks a bit wordy, but let me just you know talk that through. Alan Wynne Jones, who is a Welsh international rugby union player, equaled the world record of international rugby appearances in the final match of this year's Six Nations. He's the Welsh captain. He equaled the number of international appearances. Whose record did he equal? who is the other person that has played the same number of times as Alan Wynne-Jones. Not a Welshman from another country. What's the name of the person who has played the same number of international rugby matches as Alan Wynne-Jones? So you just need to give me a name of an international rugby player who has played the same number of games now as Alan Wynne Jones, or Alan Wynne Jones has played the same number as this other guy. I'm not asking you how many, just the name of the player. Number six, number seven, another rugby question, but there you go. That's because I like rugby. Which team, which international team this is, so a country, which team has never lost, never lost a Rugby Union World Cup final? So the Rugby Union World Cup, just to put a bit of background, has been running since 1987. It's played every four years. Which team has never lost a final. That's number seven, international rugby team Never lost a final. May or may not help you, but there's only ever four teams that have ever won the Rugby World Cup, the Rugby Union World Cup. Only four teams have ever won it. One of those four has never lost in the final. Three of them have lost and won. But one of them's never lost. Which one is it? And number eight... Which tennis championships make up the Grand Slam in tennis? You need to name all four of them for the point. There are four, obviously. Well, you can say that in the question, but I've told you now. There are four tennis championships that make up the Grand Slam. Can you name all of them? Shouldn't have told you there were four, really, but there you go. I'm nice like that. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of 
round four. So we'll go through some answers now for movies and sport. So we'll move on the answers. You've still got time to think that through, but let's have a look at some answers for three and four. So the first movie question, they are the three films that have won the best five Oscars, the top, the big five Oscars, sorry. It happened one night from 1934, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest from 1975, and The Silence of the Lambs in 1991. So it's quite a while ago since it's happened, but as long as you've got one of those three films, you can have a point. If you've got two or three, well done. One point. So obviously quite a big achievement to get that if it's only happened so rarely. But there you go, and that's number one. Number two, the film clip. Here we go with the sound again. The first night's the toughest. No doubt about it. They march you in naked as the day you were born. Skin burning and half blind from that delousing shit they throw on you. And when they put you in that cell, when those bars slam home, that's when you know it's for real. Old life blown away in the blink of an eye. Nothing left but all the time in the world to think about it. Great film. The magnificent Morgan Freeman narrating, as he often does, The Shawshank Redemption. Number three. The movie still there is from The Imitation Game. Biography of... Um, forgotten his name now how bad is that but the guy who cracked the indie giver code Benedict Cumberbatch and Kira Knightley in this in the in the story that's number three number four the rain man or rain man Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise Alan Turing that was the name I was trying to think of thank you Clive how bad I didn't get that um, so rain man is the number four movie and number five is Saving Mr. Banks Mary Poppins and Walt Disney That's the backstory of that um, movie so Saving Mr. Banks for number five number six here's the second film clip sound clip no lies why then I confess it is my intention to commandeer one of these ships, pick up a crew and tour to raid, pillage, plunder, and otherwise pill for my Weasley Black Guts out. And that is from the Pirates of Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, to be specific to the point. If you've just got Pirates of the Caribbean, you can have a half. But The Curse of the Black Pearl, which is the first film of the series, is the film that that clip was from. So I'm looking for Curse of the Black Pearl, even if you haven't put Carrots of Pirates of the Caribbean, but you have put Curse of the Black Pearl, you can have a point. But Pirates of the Caribbean will only get you half. So it's a specific film, the first film. Okay, number six. Number seven, Parasite is the film that won Best Oscar last year. Not one that I've seen, I have to say, but that's the current holder, I guess, of the Best picture Oscar with the Oscars about to take place very soon virtually and number eight the actor who played Private Godfrey in the film version of Dad's Army was Michael Gambon and a number of other actors were in that film as well obviously famous actors but Michael Gambon is who we're looking for for this question so that's movies sport we're moving on to the stadium is Lord's Cricket Ground. The iconic sort of um, eye stroke tower is the media centre, I believe, where they have all the people who are reporting on the matches there. But it's Lord's Cricket Ground is the answer I'm looking for anyway. Uh, number two, the two footballers in the mishmash faced, mishmash face, Alan Shearer and Gareth Bale. There are your half a point each. So if you only got one of them, you get a half. If you get both, you get a point, obviously. So that's the famous footballers in that mishmash face. Number three, 
The first female winner of the Sports Personality of the Year was Angela Lonsborough, swimmer. Point for Angela Lonsborough if you've got 1962. But I did say two years already. So 1960 to 1964, if you've got that, you get another point or a point. So award yourself accordingly. But there was a bonus point available on that question for the year within two, plus or minus two years either way. Number four, the 20 Premier League managers, there are nine of them who are English. All I want for the point is just the number nine, not only leeway, but for those of you who are actually interested, they are the English managers in the Premier League. So the recent change, most recent change is Ryan Mason at Spurs since Pochettino, uh, since Mourinho got sacked. Heckingbottom was the most previous one before that. And even in the news today, there's talk of Frank Lampard becoming Crystal Palace manager, although that still remains English. But that's currently, as of today, the nine English managers in the Premier League. So there you go. And number five. The maximum number of cars allowed on a starting grid of Formula One Grand Prix is 26. And that hasn't happened since 95. Currently, there are 20 teams, 20 cars, sorry, starting on the grid, making 10 teams. But they can have a maximum of 13 teams, which hasn't happened for, as I say, 25 years. So 26 is the number you were looking for for that particular question. Number five, Alan Wynne-Jones equal the world record of Richie McCaw, New Zealand All Blacks. They both played for their respective countries 148 times. So Richie McCaw, you don't have to worry about the country, as long as you've got the um, player, you get a point. For number six, number seven, the team that has never lost a Rugby World Cup final is South Africa. They have played in three finals and won them all. England, Australia, New Zealand have all played in four, but they have lost at least one. England have lost three, actually. So, But South Africa have played in the least of the winners, and they've won every time they've appeared in the final. So well done then. Number seven, number eight, sorry. The four tennis championships that make up the Grand Slam, and you need these all for the point, the Australian Open, the French Open, Wimbledon, and the US Open. Okay, very good. Now, you will have to excuse me for a moment. I do need to take a comfort break, but I will be back in one minute. Thank you, Chris. You're absolutely right. This is this is not definitely not mastermind or university challenge. Anyway, sorry about that, but here we are back again. OK, so we're on to our round five, which is all about quiz shows, TV quiz shows. So there's number one. I'll put it first because you might need some time to think about it. So you've got a few questions to work, work it through. But there have been, since it started in 1968, 14 captains on a question of sport. 
I'm just asking you for a point to name seven of the captains. So you've got time to think about it. I'm only asking you for half of them. Not saying it's easy, but can you name half of the team captains of Question of Sport? So straight away we carry on with a sport question, sort of. But um, it's one of the earlier quiz shows. 14 captains. Can you name seven of them? So I'll leave that with you. Well, you've got another seven questions to go through. Are you thinking of it? Well, 16 questions really when we have the other round. Number two. Who was the original host of Ask the Family? Could well have been the first TV quiz show, actually. I'm not 100% sure about that. But who was the original host? So this is certainly going back at least to the 50s, I should think. So, who was the original host of Ask the Family? Well, Spotty Clive, yes. Number one was a quiz, sport question, sort of. <laughs> Think of some famous sports people who may have been captains. Number two, the original host of Ask the Family was... Write it down. Number three, what was the first quiz show presented on Channel 4? Now, it also coincides with it. It's actually the first ever show of any kind um, broadcast on Channel 4. So not only was it the first show on Channel 4, it was actually a quiz show. What was it? Channel 4. Can't remember the date, seventies perhaps. What was the first quiz show on Channel Four? Might be arguable whether it's a quiz show, I suppose, but um it is for the purpose of this. A different sort of quiz show. It's not about knowledge necessarily. In the sense that we're doing this evening. Anyway, I don't want to give it away, do I? Number four. Who were the three presenters of Blankety Blank? I've got a funny feeling actually now I've put that. There might be another... Presenter, I think it's coming out again. I'm going back, so it hasn't been on TV for a number of years. Who were the three original presenters or the early presenters of Blankety Blank? Four, that was number five. Paul Merton and Ian Hislop are team captains of which quiz show? I watched it last night. So it's still current, it's on TV now. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that. But who, what's the TV show that they're captains of? Paul Merton, Ian Hislop. Five, that was number six. How many chasers are there currently? So the TV quiz, the chase. How many chasers are? All I want for the for one point is a number. For a bonus, can you name them? I'm not telling you how many, obviously, because that's the first question. So how many are there? 
on the chase, the chasers, and can you name them? Whether you want to give their sort of chaser name or their actual name, I don't mind. I'll give you both when I give you the answers. But how many chasers are there? And for a bonus point, can you name them? So that's number six. You've got a bit of time when we go through the other round to work on that as well. Number seven. Who are the two hosts of Eggheads? Hasn't been on TV for a while, I don't think. But um, who are the previous, current, whichever way you look at it. Well, previous, I think one of them. Who are the hosts of, the two hosts, over the time it's been on TV, of Eggheads? We're looking for the host this time, not the not the eggheads themselves. That's number seven, and number eight on quiz shows. Who is the main host of the quiz show Tenable? Now, I say main host because, not that I watch it every day, but it's uh, earlier in the week I did see a different host. I'm not counting that person, I just want the one who, the one person who has mainly hosted this program Tenable. Might be difficult if you work because you may not get a chance to see it because it's on at three o'clock in the afternoon. My mum used to like watching it, so I used to go around and watch it with her. Anyway, so it's either you know it or you don't sort of question, isn't it? Who's the main host of Tenable? So that is our questions on our quiz shows. We're moving into the final round, which is history. So let's see how we get on with this. Number one, in what year was Winston Churchill born? I'll give you five years either way, so plus or minus five on this. But when was Winston Churchill born? What year? Number one. Number two, in what decade, just a decade, were phone boxes introduced into the UK? When did we first have phone boxes in the UK? Just a decade. Number three, which monarch was the oldest when they first came to the throne? So I don't want to know necessarily the age, but can you pick a monarch and their reg regnal number when they first came to the throne at the oldest? If you just get the name but not the number, I'll give you half. Which monarch was the oldest when they first came to the throne? A bit obscure, I guess, in one sense. It's a king. That might help. It's not a queen. It's a king. And the king was 64 and a bit when they came to the game. 64 years old to come to the throne. Which king was it? Number four, coming up. 
How many US presidential inaugurations have taken place since George Washington was first elected president? I'll let you take that in a bit, think it through. How many US presidential inaugur inaugurations have taken place since George Washington, who was the first president of the United States? Since George Washington, how many inaugurations have taken place? Inauguration is when they're sworn into office. And I mean, from then up until Joe, Joe Biden this year. Was it this year? It must be last year, mustn't it? No, it must have been this year. Last year. Well, that's last year. Anyway, from George Washington to Joe Biden, how many presidential inaugurations? Read that carefully. Number five. Puffing Billy is the world's oldest working what? Puffing Billy. I remember doing a project on this at primary school. Puffing Billy is the world's oldest working what? Number six. In what year was the Doomsday Book published? And what was its purpose? So it's a two half points here. What year was the Doomsday Book published? I suppose I better give a tolerance on that. Five years, perhaps. And what was the purpose of the Doomsday Book? What what did it? What did they publish in it? What was it? Why did they do? Why was it commissioned, if you like? That's number six. Two questions to go. Number seven. Which king led the English at the Battle of Agincourt. I should know the date, but I can't remember. Which king led the English at the Battle of Agincourt? I think that's in France, isn't it? Which was the English king who led that battle? And our final question for this evening, a little bit more recent history. In what year did Apple release the first iPhone? In what year did Apple release the first iPhone? No tolerance on the answer for that, it's too recent. But what year did Apple release the iPhone? Okay, now that's all the questions asked for this evening. So we just need to go through the answers for the last two rounds to see how you got on. And then we'll share some scores if you're happy to. Okay, so the answers to the quiz shows. Now, there is the list of the 14 captains of a question of sport. If you've got, if you've written down at least seven of those names, seven or more, you will get your point. So I'll leave that up for a little while. It's more or less in chronological order. With Matt Dawson and Phil Tufnell being the current captains. 
Henry Cooper and Cliff Morgan being the first two. So if you've got seven of those, you can have a point. There are lots of other guest captains, but these guys, these, they, these names here, were captains for at least one series, if not more. But I haven't bothered with the, the guest captains because there are lots and lots of them. But they're the 14 main captains. As long as you've got seven of those, you get a point. Ask the Family was hosted originally by Robert Robinson. I think he did call my bluff as well. Number three. The first quiz show on Channel 4 was Countdown. The first show at all on Channel 4 ever. Of any, any sort of show, it was Countdown. The three presenters of Blankety Blank. Les Dawson, Terry Wogan, and Lily Savage. But if you've put Paul O'Grady, that's fine. It's either or. But three of those for the... If you've got two of them, take a half. But when I say two, I don't mean Lily Savage and Paul O'Grady. That's only one. Number five... Paul Merson and Ian Hislop are hope captains of Have I Got News For You, a weekly satirical quiz on the week's news. Number five. Number six. The chasers, there are six chasers for the point. I asked you to name them if you wanted to for a bonus. You can have either the list on the left or the list on the right to get another point. But you want all six for the bonus point. So Anne Hegarty is the governess, Mark Labette the beast, Sean Wallace the dark destroyer, Jenny Ryan the vixen, Paul Sinner the sinner man, and the most recent one, Dara Ennis the menace. Not so keen on him, but anyway, that's just me. So six for one point and the names for two points. Number seven. The two hosts of Eggheads, Dermot Murnahan and Jeremy Vine. They must be making a new series of that. I don't know, but it hasn't been on for a while. Uh, number eight. Last question on the quizzes. The host of Tenable is Warwick Davis. He's very funny, actually. Whenever there's movie questions, he has a hint about the fact that he was in a lot of... He's in a lot of movies that people don't perhaps realise. But he's, he's a good laugh. Anyway, he's the main host of Tenable. That's the quiz questions answered. Number one on history. Winston Churchill was born in 1874. I did say to you five years either way, so 1869 to 1879, and you can have a point. Because I'm good like that. But surprisingly, he's actually, when he first became Prime Minister, he was a pensioner. And that's when he was most successful, when he became Prime Minister, because he had a pretty, not disastrous, but he didn't, he had quite a checkered career in politics up until then but obviously through World War two he led the country successfully number two in what decade were phone boxes introduced in the UK it's the 1920s surprisingly how long ago it was but the first phone boxes were in the UK in the 1920s the monarch who was oldest when they first came to the throne was William the fourth I said you were 64 and something, so nearly 65. But a point for William the Fourth. If you've got William, you can have a half. Number four. 
US presidential inaugurations, there are there have been 59. Now, I, when I said to you earlier on, read this carefully, it's because there is an inauguration even when a president is serving a second term. So this isn't the question. The question wasn't how many presidents, which is something like 45, 46, but how many inaugurations that may have been every four years since 1776. Hence, 59. So 59 is your answer for your point. Every January, every four years, the president is inaugurated. There have been obviously quite a number of presidents who've had two terms, but they still get inaugurated each time. Number five. Puffing Billy is the world's oldest steam locomotive. And locomotive is quite important there. If you put steam engine, that implies that it's a static engine. But a locomotive is a moving engine on a rail. And Puffing Billy, something like 1815, maybe earlier, than, maybe a bit later. I can't remember now. I know I did it in as a project. Steam locomotive. If you put steam engine, you can have a half, but steam locomotive for the point. Absolutely right, Clive. Yes, we've still got time to become Prime Minister. Winston Churchill was Prime Minister at 65. We've got years yet before we need to start our political career. OK, number six on history. The year that the Doomsday Book was published was 1086. It was commissioned by William the Conqueror and it was basically a survey of England's assets and the economy. If you've got words to that effect, you can get both point, oh, the point, sorry, half. 1086, I did say I'd give you five years either way on that as well. So 1081 to 1091, and it's a survey of England's assets. I think it's just England. It might be more than England, but it might be Britain, but I'm pretty sure it's just England. So words to that effect, for you decide if you deserve the point or not. Number seven. The king that led the English at the Battle of Agincourt is Henry V. Henry V. If you've got Henry something or other, you can have a half. And the final question, Apple released its first iPhone in 2007. They're on iPhone 12 now and they pretty much do one each year, more or less. So there you go. I don't think they've released one this year yet. So that follows. One a year. We're on iPhone 12. 2007 is your answer. OK, so that's all the questions. If those of you who are happy to would like to share your scores just to see how we got on. Add them up. Put your scores on the chat room, chat live. Let me know how many you've got. Just, out of, out of, just for fun, let's see who's won. Thank you again for taking part. Slightly less people than previously. But nevertheless, it's all good fun. And it's all learning, isn't it? I'm sure you've all learnt something tonight. 30, very good. 25 and a half, well done Paul. Thirty-three for Janet and Murray. Twenty-seven for Kate. Or a bit lower than normal, Kate, but well done. 33 is our top score so far. 25 and a half, same as Paul for Clive. You can probably see all these popping up as well. So Janet and Murray are top at the moment. John and Rachel, 22. And got 26 and a half. Oh, she doesn't like the sport, I knew that. 
But she's done well on the quizzes. Eight out of eight for quizzes. Well done. So 33 is our top score. Trevor's 22 and a half. Thank you. Very good. Anyway, well done, everyone. Thanks for coming along and taking an hour or so of your Saturday evening. Cheered me up a bit for the quiz, even though West Ham lost. Not surprising, though. But there you go. Good. Well done, everybody. Thank you very much. 20 and a half is not abysmal. Pat, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit below half, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's horses for courses. Everyone has different strengths, don't they? So it's the taking part that counts, as they always say. I don't take that attitude. I'm out to win a quiz, but then again, there you go. <laughs> well done, everyone. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you for donating to the Foods Bank. Yes, if anyone wishes to, although I'm not doing it for any specific charity, but it would be good if people felt they could donate. The Food Bank is a very needy and very worthy charity, local charity that we can donate to. So if you feel you want to, you can find their details online. And they would always welcome any gifts, whether they be food or money. Still a lot of people struggling as we come out of the pandemic it's left a lot of people economically struggling oh I can't leave sport out <laughs> maybe I like to I'll vary it a bit we'll see how we go good night all <laughs>